So we've had the beta for DaVinci Resolve 20 for like a day. So it's time to start asking the big questions. Like is DaVinci Resolve 20 everything we could have possibly hoped for and more? Kinda. <laughs> but actually, I want to do something really interesting in this video, and that is look back at two videos I made just like a month or two ago now. I asked you all what you wanted in this upcoming new version of DaVinci Resolve. Then I brought all those responses together and came away with seven big categories that were by far the most requested. So now that we have DaVinci Resolve 20, I want to go back through this list of the most requested features or the most requested areas and see how what we wanted stacks up against what we got. How's that sound? I think that sounds fun. Let's do it. Uh, the first thing and most requested in one name or another uh, was AI tools. And you all were right. And I was very wrong. I was a little bearish on more AI tools, but wow, we did we get a lot of AI tools in DaVinci Resolve 20. I'll reference my overview video many times in this video, but link will be in the description to that, walking through some of these uh, larger, more exciting features, as well as you know a handful of um, some other small things that we requested and got here, but also just like smaller uh, quality of life, or you know those like small little tidbits that are still really nice that sometimes fall through the cracks. All that was in the past video, so I won't show off a lot of specifics, but we got that multicam sort of smart switch, we've got that voice convert, we have that checkerboard to different pieces, we have the audio assistant, we've got better auto transcription and the ability to put fusion clips on all that auto transcription, and better magic mask and depth map, and some really cool like vector tracking tools in Fusion, which which I don't really know if those if those are AI. We got IntelliScript which you can feed at your raw footage and your script and resolve, you know, will edit your video for you, kinda, pretty much. <laughs> Certainly a wider array of more AI tools than I ever thought we would get in this update, as well as a tease of maybe coming soon, an AI set extender that is just straight up generative AI. Oh, the music extender that we got in 20. Uh, lots of people specifically requested that, and now it's just in Resolve. But that uh, generative AI, um, the AI set extender, they said that is coming in the future and will be a separate like cloud project, so some other paid tier for that maybe. If you appreciate videos like this, you should visit sterlingsupply.co. This is my website where you can download dozens of presets, plugins, and effects for DaVinci Resolve. Many of these presets are completely free. Several are paid premium products, and website members also receive a bundle of those premium products along with exclusive extras like in-depth breakdowns of my newest presets. Why not check out my master tracker plugin? Track text, images, or video clips right on the edit page or perform other effects like locked on stabilization. My ongoing work is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Long story short, uh, this first request, AI tools, we absolutely got it. The next thing people requested was more AI customization. And we certainly didn't get the full blown maximum customization that I know some people wanted, but we did get some like interesting little UI news. Um, of course, we got this keyframes editor, which we will talk about later. Um, but one of the highlights of this is that you click this button and completely pops out this frame. That's like a little bit of a bold move for Resolve. And of course, on vertical timelines, we have that new sort of vertical whole side of the window viewer. A lot of these people who talked about UI specifically talked about UI customization for editing vertical video, and that's something we specifically got. So I'm gonna chalk this up for more AI customization we did get in Resolve 20. Third, keyframing. Um, comments on this were sort of split across, you know, all the different places you can keyframe and resolve, but certainly a lot of them were on the edit page. And the fact that we got, you know, multiple different views for keyframes that you can set. So if you do something like change your position on this little title, you can see keyframes here, and then you can see the curve over here. You can snap to, where's my curve? Video position, get rid of that zoom. Wow, select those keyframes, ease them, woo. Hop back to these timing controls if you want to stretch it out. For the amount of people that really wanted attention being put to keyframing on the edit page, wow, did you get it? Three for three so far, what's number four? Ah, uh, well, number four is 
um, uh, some attention to the macro editor or edit controls menu in Fusion. This really comes out of my specific community. I make tons of presets and templates and plugins for Fusion. If you haven't seen any of those, there might be a little ad read somewhere in this video, but that lives all over on sterlingsupply.co and I talk about it here on the channel as well. I have made dozens of free presets for Resolve, so a lot of people who watch my channel are interested in making their own presets. And a big uh, way you do that is with the macro editor in the Fusion page. Um, unfortunately, especially with the macro editor specifically, absolutely nothing has changed. It's this menu, um, which can be confusing and is confusing, um, but nothing has really changed here. However, there is one small thing I do want to talk about, and that is on the other menu I talked about, the edit controls menu. If you have no idea what this is, it's okay. But if you have ever dabbled in the edit controls menu, we have a new option, an on change bar down here that can trigger a script or a bit of code whenever a control that you modify using this menu is changed. I don't have a great use case for that yet. Um, I already have some friends thinking about cool examples and hopefully I talk about this more before too long because it can be, it seems like it can be pretty cool and pretty powerful, but also kind of unfortunately, that's the one thing we got in both of these big fusion systems. So I'm gonna really call that a, a nope, a nope there. But hey, three for four, what's next? Text formatting. Wow, did we ever get some update here? If I hop over to, to layout and set this type to text box, wrap to a text box, toggle on my fusion overlay, I can see that text box and the text automatically conforms to that text box. If I do something like change this format over here and it does, it does that and it's very cool. Uh, a super basic thing that we have been wanting for a long time and lots of people were still requesting and now it's in Resolve. Lots of people did request also a different way to do like character level styling and that didn't really specifically change but we did get the multi-text tool which for some people might function kind of the way they want it even though I wish I wish that text I wish that tool did a few other things. Maybe that's also a video I'll make. I want to keep making videos about Resolve 20 while people are talking about it. It's exciting. Um, so text formatting. Um, I'm going to say purely because of this text box, we got a substantive change there. Four out of five so far. Next, auto captions. Like I said with the AI tools, um, the raw transcription, we said that got a buff kind of. That is better for performing. Um, we are getting that in loss of new languages. And uh, I will just show a video clip of the last video as well. That ability to apply fusion clips two subtitles we have generated, including new options for like whole lines of subtitles, but then specific highlights on each individual word as is being spoken. Wow, I know people wanted this because they told me they wanted it for this other video I made, and now it's just part of Resolve. I want to specifically call out again that generating auto captions is a DaVinci Resolve Studio feature, but replacing those auto captions with fusion effects um, that is available to all users. So if you manually type up your subtitles or uh, get those subtitles through some other service and then bring them into Resolve, at that point you can drop Fusion titles on those and have that still, uh, you know, word by word styling effects going on. So yes, auto caption improvements automatically. Five out of six. What seven? Vector graphics. Ooh. <laughs> I think the big graphics update is probably some of the cool um, things they did bringing in PSD or any like multi-layer source. You can like explode a PSD on your edit page timeline, or if you bring a PSD into Fusion, you can have each individual node reference certain layers uh, in that one combined PSD source, which is cool. Um, but again, that's a PSD, not vector. We have the shape system, which lots of people still think is underutilized, especially for something like that system to load in SVG or vector files into Fusion and have it recreate it. That still works on like the old masking system, not the shape system. A few of the specific requests that people had about vector graphics, not really touched on. So we are left um, with a general score of five out of seven for the major areas that people really wanted updates. They really wanted new features or like old features, old bugs fixed, all of that. Five out of seven, I think is pretty good. As well as a handful of other miscellaneous like one-off recommendations, like we kind of got our version of like the puppet tool from After Effects. 
The opening of that video I made yesterday, it starts with a mini list of things people had specifically requested, and there are a few more things in that list. So I will again kick you over to that video, but I wanted this video to sort of um, wrap up this experiment we ran a little while ago, um, and this like interplay with the community. It was a cool little journey. I asked what they wanted, I reported that all back to them, and now we are kind of like looking back after the fact at what we all got. Um, this was fun, and it seems like some people liked it, so maybe this is a thing we can kind of look forward to um, with other Resolve updates, if we have a general idea of where they're coming. NAB, NAB was a safe bet. I will continue to talk about new cool features. There are even some like major parts of this update I haven't touched at all, so stick around on the channel if you want more of that. This is all very cool, very fun to talk about, at least I think it is, hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.